Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be talking about apply functions in R. The apply functions available in base R is a set of vectorized functions that allow us to perform complex operations on arrays, matrices, data frames, etc. In most applications, it is a simpler and faster alternative to loops when we want to perform repetitive actions. In this video, we'll talk about four functions of this family, apply, l apply, s apply and t apply. Coming to the apply function, used to apply a function to the rows or columns of a matrix or data frame. The syntax looks like this. There are three major parameters. X is the input matrix or data frame. Margin is a parameter that specifies how the function is to be applied. If we specify the value of margin as one, the operation is performed row wise. And if we specify the value of margin as two, the operation is performed column wise. Fun is the function that is to be applied on the input data. Now let's create a matrix. Here we are creating a matrix with 10 rows and three columns. Now let's see how we can up use the apply function. So here the input that we are passing is the apply underscore matrix that we created. Margin value is specified as one. So the operation will be row wise and the function that we are applying on the input matrix is sum. So what we are going to get as output is a vector and each of the elements of the vector is the sum of each of the rows of the input matrix. If we want to perform uh, the apply, if we want to get the column wise summation, then instead of specifying margin value as one, we we'll specify margin value as two. So if we run this, we will get a vector that is giving the sum of each of the columns of the input matrix. Similarly, we can use, uh, we can uh, uh, take any other function. So if you want to get the mean of each of the columns of the input matrix, then we see the output is giving the mean of each of the columns. Now, if we want to uh, use the apply function on a data frame and we want to get the uh, column wise summation, and if the data has NAs in it, then we can use a fourth parameter na.rm is equal to true to get the correct calculation, get the correct uh, column wise summation. Next, coming to the l apply function, used to apply a function to the elements of a list or vector. The syntax looks like this. The x is the input list or vector and fun is the function. If the input is a list, then the function is applied to each of the elements of the list. And if the input is a vector, then the function is applied to each of the elements of the vector. And in either case, whether the input is a list or a vector, the output is always a list. Now let's create a list here. So this list has two elements. One is element A, which is a vector and element B, which is the, which is a data frame. So if we want to apply, uh, use the lapply function on this list to get the sum, then we see that the output is a list and within the list, what are we getting? The sum of element A, the data points in element A and the sum of the data points in element B. Similarly, instead of a list, if you want to pass a vector to the L apply function. So let us create a vector here. So vector has three data points, 36, 64 and 144, three elements. Now, if we use the L apply function to get the square root, then we see that the function square root is applied to each of the elements of the vector and the output is a list. So that is what we discussed here. If the input is a list, then the function is applied to each of the elements of the list like we saw. So the function has been applied to each of the elements, the sum function. And if the input is a vector, then the function is applied to each of the elements of the vector, which we have seen here. And in either case, whether the input is a list or a vector, the output is always a list. Coming to the sapply function, this is very similar to the lapply function. The syntax is also same. The only difference is that the sapply function tries to simplify the output and returns a vector matrix or array depending on the input. So we will create a vector here and we will see the difference between sapply and lapply. I just want to bring your attention to this syntax here. We have defined our own function. We are going to calculate cube of each of the data points uh, that is passed the into the uh, uh, function basically. So let's run this. 
So we see that our input list underscore C is a vector. When we are uh, passing this to the S apply function, what we are getting is a cube of each of the elements of the vector and the output is also a vector. And when we are uh, passing list underscore C through the L apply function, the output is a list. So the only difference between S apply and L apply is that for L apply, the output will always be a list. For S apply, it will depend on the, what the input function, uh, what the input is. So in this case, since the input is a vector, the output is a simplified version. It's a vector itself. So depending on the application, we can use S apply and L apply. The last function that we are going to discuss today is the T apply function. Similar to apply function, uh, it is used to create group summaries at a given level. The syntax looks like this. There are three major parameters. X is the input. Index determines the factor based on which the data is distinguished and fun is the function. Let's see what that means. So in order to uh, demonstrate this, we are going to create a data frame. So this is a simple data frame. We have student, subject and marks. There are three students and two subjects and the marks obtained by each of the students in the respective subjects. Now let's see how we can use the t apply function. So the first parameter that is the input. So we are passing the marks column. The second parameter that is the index. We are passing the subject and we are going to uh, uh, calculate max. So that is the function that we are passing. So what this will do is if we run this, we see that we are getting the max marks obtained by any of the students in each of the subjects. So we see in maths, the maximum marks is 92. So we are getting 92 and in science, the maximum marks is 90. So we are getting 90. So we have created a summary and we have obtained the max at the index level subject. Uh, so these are the four functions that we discussed today. The, these are very powerful tools. Uh, and can be used to perform repetitive actions. Um, that's all for today's video. I hope you learned something new. Thank you.